In my last video about the M1 iPad Pro, I took a look at the Thunderbolt port, and specifically the speed of access of external drives. And what we found was quite shocking. Uh, the Thunderbolt performance is really slow, to the point where you're actually better off with a USB-C drive. Uh, the question is, does that still hold true if you're using an external Thunderbolt dock? Uh, well, behind me here, I've got a few things to test out today, notably the Razer Thunderbolt 4 dock. So let's give it a try and see what we find. This is a pretty new product from Razer, and I'll do a full review on the channel at some point, but it's uh, the Thunderbolt 4 Dock Chroma, is what they call it. It's got a bit of RGB lighting. If you're using it with your PC, you can control that. Uh, obviously, you can't control the RGB lighting from your M1 iPad. Uh, however, it should work with the M1 iPad. And what we're getting here is a headphone socket. So we've got an SD card reader. There's an Ethernet port, two USB Type A's, and then three downstream Thunderbolt ports. Let's start by having a look at an external USB-C monitor. Now, I've got here my Pepper Jobs Xtend Touch 16-inch Full HD portable monitor. Uh, lots of people, whenever I feature this on the channel, ask me what it is. Um, I have actually reviewed it on the channel, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, let's connect it up. I've got it plugged into the back of the Thunderbolt dock. Let's just connect the dock up to the M1 iPad, see what happens. And that's interesting. The dock is connected, as you might be able to see, the RGB lighting has lit up and the iPad is now charging, uh, but the screen hasn't come on. Now, let me just try a different port. Not a particularly great start here. Um, I want to prove that this display does work with the M1 iPad, so let's just plug it directly into the iPad for a moment. And as you can see there, it's fired up straight away when we plug it straight into the iPad itself. Uh, I'm a little bit confused as to why it wouldn't work through a dock, particularly as Apple advertises the use of the Thunderbolt port specifically for docks. I'm sure I'm gonna get lambasted in the comments for this, but I genuinely wasn't expecting that uh, to fail. I was expecting it to work. Anyway, there we go, your mileage may vary. Uh, I don't have any other USB-C screens with me here today to test that, but I, I will do some additional testing and obviously interact with you guys in the comments section on that. Uh, what I do have behind me is a, is a dusty old Apple Thunderbolt display. Uh, this is a Thunderbolt 2 display, and I wondered whether it might work with Apple's Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter using the dock. So let's have a go at that. So we'll just plug the dock back into the iPad. These old Thunderbolt displays came with a, a tethered Thunderbolt cable and also a MagSafe charger for your laptop. Uh, this display itself actually has something of a dock built in. I think there's three USB ports, another Thunderbolt port, and uh, an Ethernet port on the back of it. Uh, let's just see if we can get the screen to fire up first. So this is Apple's standard Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. It takes a Thunderbolt 2 cable here, and then we've got a Thunderbolt 3 connection to plug into the back of the dock. Let's give it a go. Would you look at that? It does indeed work. Uh, and in the process, of course, we can see how utterly useless the external display is on an iPad. We've got these black bars either side because the aspect ratio is different. When you mirror a display using a Mac laptop, it will change the aspect ratio of the Mac's display to match whatever the external display is if you're doing mirroring. Uh, but it works the other way around on iPad. Why can't we have the full aspect ratio of an external display? Some would argue that we should be able to. Uh, let me show you something. If I set up a split-screen multitasking view on the iPad, I've got the Files app on the right-hand side, and I've got a web browser open to YouTube on the left-hand side. And of course, you'll know this if you've used multitasking on the iPad, that we can stretch either of those apps to take up three quarters of the screen. So when we change that multitasking split view and stretch the app's viewport, the app has to respond to that and it adapts by reflowing the content to fit the new viewport. So technically, there's no reason why it couldn't adapt to a 16 by 9 ratio. And I've seen people say that because this is possible, it must mean that Apple has deliberately chosen not to allow this. Uh, I don't think it's actually quite as simple as that because not all apps are multitaskable on the iPad. And I suspect that's because not all apps can reflow their content or respond to changes in viewport like this. 
In any case, I do feel that it's a little bit disingenuous of Apple to advertise the external display on the product page, where they show LumaFusion, of course, using the external display to preview video content. I don't personally know of any other apps that can do that. Uh, if you do know of any, obviously, leave a comment in the comments section. So, external display support is always going to be a bit of a mixed bag with an iPad, and I don't think anybody's going to rush out to buy the Thunderbolt-equipped M1 iPad Pro purely for display support unless you already have a Thunderbolt display that you really want to use with your iPad. And from the limited testing we've done here, it's not absolutely guaranteed that your USB-C monitor is going to work with a Thunderbolt dock either, uh, which is a bit of a disappointment. Uh, now I do have the dock plugged in with an ethernet cable. So what I'm next gonna do is disable the wireless on the iPad and run a speed test just to check that ethernet works. So Ethernet works absolutely fine. In the particular building that we're in at the moment, the maximum we would ever get is about 100 meg. And uh, as you can see, we're getting 93 and a half. So that's exactly what I would expect from an Ethernet connection. So Ethernet works fine with a Thunderbolt dock. But do you need a Thunderbolt dock to get that kind of Ethernet performance? I have here a basic uh, USB-C dongle. Uh, this one is uh, made by Pepper Jobs, but there are loads available and they range from about $30 to $60, that sort of thing. Uh, this one has an ethernet port on it. So let's just run the same speed test with this dongle and see what happens. And we're getting about 91 meg. And again, I'd say that's within an error margin. Uh, it's probably working just as fast as the Thunderbolt dock. Uh, our bandwidth here is contended by other businesses in the area. So you can get very similar results with a USB-C dock or a cheaper dongle like this. And when you factor in the cost of buying a Thunderbolt dock, this particular Razer dock here cost me 330 pounds. I'll put up the price in US dollars as well. That's a huge difference between something cheaper like this. And yet this simple dongle gives me HDMI, it gives me a USB-C output so that I can actually drive uh, this USB-C display with it. Uh, I've got ethernet, I've got USB. The only thing that's missing is the Thunderbolt. So I think that's really important to the whole argument here of Apple making a big thing about Thunderbolt and being able to connect to Thunderbolt docks. Really connecting external displays if they're not Thunderbolt displays is something you can already do. Uh, connecting up ethernet using uh, SD card readers and that sort of thing, you can already do that with your existing iPad. So really it narrows the whole thing down to the usage of the Thunderbolt port being specific to fast external storage. And Apple specifically advertises that on their product page that this is ideal for fast external storage. So what will we find if we plug in this Thunderbolt drive? So if you didn't watch the other video, what's inside here is a Western Digital NVMe drive. It's a Western Digital Black SN750, a 500 gigabyte model that I bought uh, brand new just for testing with the M1 iPad. And this enclosure, yes, it's a bit basic, but it works. And I've tested this combination with a number of different computers running Thunderbolt, and they're all very consistent in performance, uh, with the exception of the M1 iPad Pro, uh, which is like a snail trying to navigate its way through a bucket of molasses. It's so slow. Uh, we were getting something like 0.8 gigabits per second when we did the right test on this. Could the dock make a difference? Is it a power issue? Is there something else going on? If we plug it into the dock, will we get the same sort of performance that we got on the M1 Mac Mini? If you didn't watch the previous video, what we've got is a folder of mixed files. So it's a folder with lots of different files in it of different sizes. And that came to about 26 and a half gigabytes. So I then created a single file using uh, Mac's disk imager of exactly the same size. Here are the results when we did it with the Thunderbolt drive plugged directly into the M1 iPad Pro. First of all, the read results. So it took 47 seconds. And going through the dock for that single file took 48 seconds. For the folder of mixed files, it took one minute, 20 seconds to copy that across and using the dock one minute and 17 seconds. So within a margin of error, there's basically no difference at all for read performance on this drive by using the Thunderbolt dock. But what about writing to the drives, which is where it was really, really slow. When we had the drive plugged directly into the iPad Pro, the single file took three minutes, 44 seconds to write. And with the dock, three minutes, 46 seconds. When we did the folder of mixed files, it took four minutes and two seconds. And with the dock, four minutes and nine seconds. 
So it's just a quick test today. I haven't tested loads and loads of different devices and clearly I need to do a bit more testing, but I think the results are perhaps a little underwhelming. Obviously, being able to plug your iPad into a dock is a really useful thing, uh, particularly as that might combine a whole bunch of things that you want to connect. But almost all of those functions can be completed with a USB-C dock or even a dongle that costs significantly less than a Thunderbolt dock. So really, the only benefit from being able to connect a Thunderbolt dock is to attach Thunderbolt devices. And the only Thunderbolt devices which are really of use at this point in time for the iPad are uh, external monitors that uh, need Thunderbolt inputs and fast external storage. And if that fast external storage is incapable of hitting the speeds that you expect from Thunderbolt, then what's the point in having a Thunderbolt port? In the last video, I, I took a little bit of heat for suggesting that there was any kind of deficiency with the iPad, uh, particularly when it's most likely a driver or software issue that's causing the problem, and it will likely get fixed in a future release of the operating system. Uh, but I don't think that argument stands up. Apple advertised this product on their website right now, the product that you can buy right now that ships with iPadOS 14 as having Thunderbolt support. They themselves on their own website put the up to 40 gigabits uh, statement on there. They're also saying it's useful for fast external storage and creative professionals who need to move large files or assets. So Apple are clearly advertising this device as being capable of working with Thunderbolt storage. And what we're seeing, and not just me, by the way, other reviewers as well, what we're seeing is that uh, the speeds are really poor. Just compare that for a moment with another great release on this new iPad, the fantastic new screen, which is mini LED. And Apple advertise it with 10,000 mini LEDs. Uh, just suppose you bought one of these things on the basis of that advertising and on the basis that Apple say it supports HDR, only to find when you switch it on that just 2% of those LEDs are actually lighting up. Would you be happy with that? I don't think so. If Apple are advertising the M1 iPad Pro as having Thunderbolt, then it should have proper Thunderbolt support. Thunderbolt is an established standard, and this device should meet those standards. I'm going to keep testing this uh, iPad with uh, different docks and different devices to see whether or not uh, anything changes what we've seen here today. Uh, and I'm sure that there are some out there who disagree with some of the points I've made, and that's absolutely fine. We can all have our own opinions. Uh, let's talk about it in the comments section. Uh, have you been out and bought an iPad purely on the basis of Thunderbolt support? Uh, if so, how do you feel about the performance of the Thunderbolt? Uh, do you think it's acceptable that Apple can advertise this device in this way? And just to be absolutely clear, um, I think the iPad Pro is a fantastic device. And if you're coming to it fresh, uh, and you're not upgrading, then you'll be absolutely delighted with the M1 iPad Pro. It's still the best tablet that money can buy. Uh, if you've upgraded from a 2018 or a 2020 model, uh, I think you may be a little bit disappointed because it doesn't really offer you much new other than that amazing new mini LED display. Uh, if you're upgrading though on the basis of Thunderbolt, that's gonna be disappointing perhaps. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, you know what to do with all of this stuff and uh, Hope to see you again soon for some more geekery.